Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 6. Today we're going to be doing my review for Episode 13, titled The Gauntlet. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DCTV videos later this year. Also, become a member of the channel. If you want to join in on our monthly member Zoom call, this is going to be happening next week. All you need to do is click on the Join button underneath the Subscribe button and choose any tier and you'll be welcome to join our call and we're going to talk and it'll just be me and a couple of the other members and that's going to be happening next Friday. So now is the time to join if you want to be a part of that. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get into my review for this episode. So I really enjoyed this episode. I thought this was really good. It was definitely one of the better episodes of the season. Fully into the story and all about the gauntlets and... You know, there's amazing bits in this episode, like flashbacks and recreations of past scenes that I absolutely loved. And so we'll get into all of that as we go through this review. But first off, Lena returns to National City. She doesn't want to talk about her magical powers and her mom and what she found out back in her hometown. So she asks Supergirl just to give her some time before she explains everything that happened. And we do get that explanation at the end of the episode. But then at this point, you have Supergirl and Lena and they both go off to the fortress and they talk to the Kryptonian witch who shows up multiple times throughout this episode and talks about the totems, basically introducing the core idea of it and like the way that they're used and the power that they hold. And so apparently they are in the form of artifacts and these artifacts can be anything around the world that symbolize the certain feeling or emotion that they are all about. And so basically the witch warns of the challenges ahead and at times, she's a little bit cringy, like the way that she's kind of looking into nowhere and then she's doing like funny kind of actions and moves and like funny pieces of lines. But like, I think she gets better throughout the episode as we kind of get used to how she is. But at first it's, it comes across as a little bit fast, like a little bit fake. But as I said, I think it gets better. Let's move on to the next thing. So the Courage Totem is in the form of an ancient slingshot. This is a very famous slingshot, a very famous artifact from the past. And so obviously you have Nixley who is going after it. Team Supergirl don't know about the slingshot at this point, but they soon find out as Nixley goes to the museum with the help of Mitch, who does some reconnaissance at the museum, which also introduces the scientist who's trying to control lightning and thunderstorms essentially by harnessing them. But her funding was taken away and Basically, the courage of the totem gives her the courage to take back her plans, beat up her boss, and enact what she was planning to do without any actual experiments and tests. So it's very risky, and she realizes this by the end of the episode. But then we have Alex, who helps Supergirl, and Kelly is going to help Joey throughout this episode. That's why she's not there for a bunch of it, but she does return at the end. And so in regards to Nixley, she fails to get rid of Team Supergirl as the slingshot totem splits in two. And so the scientist gets hit, Nixley gets away, and everyone else in the museum unknowingly was affected by the totems and was given a boost of courage and it affects everyone differently due to who they are, their powers, and where they're from. And so we have all the different kind of symptoms playing off. Like you have Jean who is ultra courageous and is like commending everyone like he has the courage to be open and express his thoughts to people which i thought was very funny throughout this episode also alex being super courageous and doing anything for everyone else and not thinking about herself but obviously in the case of the scientist it's a different thing where she's needs the courage to use her experiment and go ahead with it and take it away from her boss so that ends up not in a good way However, in regards to Brainy, his courage is to guesstimate and to not be perfect. And I thought that was very funny because they thought, oh, for the whole episode, Brainy hasn't been actually taken over by this magical influence. But in a subtle way, he's been changed as well. Okay, so Brainy is taken over by Vida, the Kryptonian witch at one point. It's a pretty funny scene, I think. Jesse Raff did an excellent job simulating her. And it's at this point where Supergirl goes ahead and tries to conquer her totem, conquer her courage and the thing that she didn't do in the past that she could have done 
but we don't get the actual explanation of what she was supposed to do because she actually never passes the test. But her test is back at the start of season 1 and episode 1 and it goes back to the night that Kara became Supergirl. And so they reuse a lot of footage but they also film some new stuff. There is the stuff in the bar where she talks, that is exactly the same. However, they just retooled it and they reshot it in literally the same way. And I thought it was really great how they did that. And it was a nice surprise in this episode. It brought something new and something different. It was also a different shot after she saved the plane. So in the past, apparently, she heard someone asking for help. But in reality, she didn't do that. Only in the dream, in this kind of state of her test, she was able to do that. And she goes, and so they redo the hair, the wet hair. And the way that Melissa specifically looked at that point is really bang on. So it was very nostalgic seeing this kind of season one type scene where she goes and she saves someone from being mugged. But then in a surprise to Kara, she doesn't actually pass her test of courage and she fails. And so likewise, at the same time, Nixley is doing her test. And so Nixley's brother and her try and do a coup against her father, which resulted in her being trapped in the Phantom Zone. But she fails her test after killing her father, she realises that she's done something wrong and so she contemplates this and later in the episode she's actually successful because she finds out what she had to do was to have the courage to be vulnerable and this was something that Supergirl maybe went wrong, maybe she should have been somehow vulnerable but we'll actually never know because she didn't actually pass that. Okay, so everything is going crazy at the museum meanwhile and Alex and Jean, they get a boost of confidence, you can see it in their eyes as they show up there. Jean is talking to the newly spawned dragon from like a small iguana or something, I don't know the specific animal. But this has happened before in the past and Jean is talking to the dragon and he's like, after they defeat him, I'm gonna get a coffee. And I verbally, like out loud laughed and I thought that was really funny and... I really liked what Sean was doing in this episode and the way that he was affected really really got around to me and so Alex and Jean they're just great in this episode and their courage to express his gratitude to people and you know literally standing up to a dragon who's about to shoot fire at him which is his worst fear and Supergirl luckily saves him but it's just so comedic it's so funny that he literally doesn't care. But let's move on to the next thing. So Supergirl goes back and she fails her test of courage once again. And at this point, Nixley passes her test. And so the scientists, meanwhile, so it's a lot of like back and forth throughout this episode. The scientist tries to harness the lightning and she successfully does it. And just back at the tower, we have Lena who is told that she must harness it and accept her magic in order to defeat Nixley, which would bypass their need to conquer their fears and conquer these emotions every single time in a battle against Nixley, and so Lena is going to be a big deal in taking down Nixley, that is made evidently clear in this episode. And so Supergirl contains the second shard of the totem, but they end up releasing it in order to restore everyone because everyone is going crazy and it's heavily affected everyone in the museum. And so, like, for instance, William is affected in a way that he was courageous enough to go to this event because of this extra boost of magical courageousness. And this obviously brought up old emotions and old flashbacks to the night that he was actually shot by Eve. And this is something that he's kept deep down with inside of himself. And I like how they brought this up because this is something that a lot of us have forgotten about and I think the writers even forgot about it so it's nice to see them actually going back to it because it actually adds some proper depth to William as he isn't like a main character he is a definite side character and so it's nice to see him getting some attention and so during this big scene where the lightning's going crazy outside and National City is going into absolute chaos Guardian shows up to help and you know she uses her shield to block off some lightning and Alex does that with her sort of device and Supergirl, Jean and Brainy they circle the storm and they're able to stop it but it's at this point that Supergirl drops from the sky and she gets flashes of Nixley's emotions and now this really reminded me of Harry Potter and Voldemort and their connection with the Horcruxes and I think that is definitely their reference here connecting them emotionally it's going to allow Supergirl to feel what Nixie's feeling and kind of interpret what she's going to do next. 
and that's pretty much what Harry was able to do with Voldemort. He was able to kind of figure out where he was and in a way tap into his emotions and that's definitely what Supergirl is going to be doing to Nixley. And so one of the final scenes of the episode is Kara and Lena as they talk on Kara's couch. It's great to see them like in normal clothes, just being comfortable. These are the classic scenes that we love in Supergirl. Obviously you've had some with Kara and Alex recently, but they haven't been kind of happy scenes. They've been scenes talking about their deep emotions and the way that the Phantom Zone affected Kara. So it's nice to see them actually talking kind of normally. But also at this point, Lena reveals what happened in her hometown and, you know, the realization that her family has a magical history and the fact that she does have powers, but being a person of scientific origin and, you know, she believes in science and all that and she kind of wants to disprove magic. It's hard for her to accept the idea that maybe she has the powers that could be useful in this situation to stop Nixley, but it's pretty evident she's going to get round to using her powers and harnessing them in a good way in order to help Team Supergirl stop Nixley before she gets all the totems and gets this ultimate power. And so just before the scene ends, Supergirl gets a sharp blast of piercing pain with inside of her head as she feels Nixley's anger and she realizes that something is going on with Nixley and then we cut to Nixley and it's the final scene with Mitch on the ship and basically what's happening is Nixley is angry that Supergirl didn't suffer at all whereas she was successful and she suffered but she realizes that maybe that is the price to pay for this ultimate power you do suffer but you're gonna get that power so it's obviously like a balancing game how far are you willing to go in order to gain ultimate power whereas it's going to be affecting you in a different way whereas the people that fail to harness that power are more happy and that is definitely going to be a big thing going forward as Nixie gets more and more angry and more and more absorbed with the totems and she's going to be more and more jealous of Supergirl and the way that she isn't affected by it but at the same time she doesn't really care and that's made evident at the end of the episode where she's basically like okay I'm gonna accept this pain so that I get this ultimate power so that's about it for this episode guys thank you guys so much for watching hopefully you enjoyed my review this episode was really good I really enjoyed it it was definitely one of the most entertaining episodes this season and I think the story is actually going somewhere and I really like the inclusion of the flashbacks and the recreations of the season 1 scenes as I mentioned. I'm sure you guys were very nostalgic during those scenes as well. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching. Please be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed the video. It really helps out if you do that. Also, subscribe and turn on notifications if you're new to not miss any videos. You can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. But for now, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.